close on things. We're not so fussed about what you call them, we're more fussed about their performance. Mm. Ladies love sheep farmers and shearers because of all the lanolin in the wool. We've just got nice. such, such soft hands. Not Are you right for see the camera in your face, quickly? Have we got time? Have we got 30 seconds? <laughs> what are you going to ask me? Well, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> Wayne, this is the scanner here. Okay, we're back. It is Saturday morning. It's actually very nice. And there's a bit of snow on the ground. I'll actually be in a conference in Wellington for most of the week. And I still wanted to do a video for you, so... Fraser, this local farmer who has been on the channel a couple of times, very kindly offered to have us along to come and see his scanning. So he's scanning, I think, I don't actually know exactly what they're scanning today. Presumably it's the mixed stage used and possibly the hoggets, but um, we'll find out. The girls are just over there. Talk a bit about sheep because we sort of, people were interested in that last time and we'll get a feel of sort of what he's aiming for because again, that'll be a bit different too. So. I'm late, as normal. Definitely working on vet time this morning, but it's okay because I'm not being paid to be here. Uh, right, let's go and find him. You can see the sun's just coming up now. It's probably about 20 past eight, um, but they've already been at it, I think, for about an hour and a half. I was a recovering beef and sheep vet. I don't like to get up too early. I don't know if you can hear that, but they're... the dogs will be in there pushing the sheep up. So, I don't know if we've ever spoken about this, but for those of you who haven't grown up on farms, a bit like me, you know that classic black and white sheep dog, and that's a collie dog, or what they call here, a heading dog. There's another breed of dog they use quite a lot uh, in this part of the world, and that's called a huntaway. In fact, that perfect timing. That big black and tan thing, there you go. Look at her. And you can see how they work. She's got a little jacket on. And they work by more brute force, really. So much more barking. They sort of drive the sheep rather than... Hello, oh, get in there. See, bigger dog, stronger dog. And they sort of drive sheep by barking being a bit more intimidating, whereas a collie sort of, dare I say it, a little bit finer, a little bit, um, a bit more finesse. Good morning, good afternoon. Just here. Good afternoon. Yeah. How's it going? It's a long breakfast. So how's it going, Fraser? Give us an update. Uh, well, we've got the two dudes here and the um, lighter use. Okay, yeah, yeah. This mob, so there's about 12 fish in this one mob. I'm with you. And have you had a good summer? Summer? The viewers want to know. It's Because the last summer we were here, it was hot, wasn't it? It was dry. Very hot. Um, but otherwise, slightly, well, did it pick up later, the lack of grass? Uh, got a good autumn. All go at Christmas time, and then it sort of buttoned off until uh, through January, February. Yes. And then sort of picked up March, April, and it's like been a really long autumn. Yeah. It has a lot, of, a lot of growth. Made things go pretty well. Always goes well here, though, I yeah, bet. Yeah. Regard. <laughs> Would have challenged a less skilled farmer that oh, summer, eh? Uh, still learning. <laughs> Check of all trades, master of none. And we've got a man who's working very hard there, so I'm not going to interrupt his flow, but yeah. we'll catch him later. So for the for the lay people, for the lay fans, Fraser, what, when you say you're condition scoring them, what exactly are you doing? Well, I'm checking their, on their back here. Yeah. And I'm thinking that's a one, that's a two, and that's a three. Okay, and what are you aiming for? Uh, you're aiming for above three. Above three, okay. So anything that's below, below, below three, we'll consider drenching them. Okay, with a wormer? Yes. Yes. Yeah, the triple. Triple, yes. So Lindsay, yep. you're the governor. No, I'm just. Or here. the gardener. <laughs> um, 
talk to me about these sheep, because again, this is all new to a lot of people. So what, we talked a bit, a bit about it at lambing time, but what, what, what's the genetics of these sheep? What's, what's, the genetics what's of the, these are the North Island Hill Country sheep. Okay. And the North Island Hill Country, because we identified many years ago, actually 40 years ago now, yeah. that the North Island Hill Country farmers, the uh, avant-garde ones, yes. were um, operating in a manner which we thought was consistent with a successful sheep operation. In other words, they were largely leaving the sheep to look after themselves. They were farming them carefully, but at the end of the day, um, realising that they had to allow the best of their sheep to thrive in a in a um, un, uh, an open uh, free free range type manner, and that was consistent with our philosophy: was that if you start interfering with sheep too much, that you generally introduce a lot of issues with it. The best thing you can do is is leave them alone, set up the systems well, yeah. have them in good condition, well fed. Uh, well managed, etc. Uh, use the vaccines which are appropriate for the time, which is not all the ones that are available, but the appropriate ones. And, uh, and then after that, leave them to um, get on with life as you'd expect them to do. In that respect, they naturally select themselves to be survivors and producers. Um, surviving comes first. Surviving comes, comes first. first. Dead sheep don't tend to produce a hell of a lot. <laughs> so what I hear you saying is, is the best of the North Country sheep, North North Island sheep, can cope with the cope with the rigours of the South Island. Absolutely, they certainly can. Although you do need to be mindful that when you take a sheep out of its environment in which it's thrived, unless you put it into a similar environment, you can potentially end up with some issues that you didn't realise. Yeah. For example, uh, some of the North Island hill country might be drier and therefore a sheep with a, a foot that uh, might be susceptible to wet conditions will yeah. not do so well down in a, in a wetter environment. Uh, so you need to be mindful of that. Yeah, absolutely. And as the actual breed, they'll be sort of a mix of Romney and, Romney and uh, Coopworth? They uh, tend to be what we... we but you're not too fast. You're not both We're not so fussed about what you call them. We're more fussed about their performance. Well, there you go. Interesting. Interesting. That would make a lot of farmers feel very un very nervous at home. Well, not nervous, it, uh, they're very proud about what they have. It's more in the stud arena. Yeah. We are commercial operators, yeah. so therefore it's not so important to us. I think you can always tell how nervous a farmer is by how close he stands to the, the scanning well, trailer. <laughs> just hoping to get some work out of him. <laughs> we're quite fortunate his girlfriend's away at the moment, so we're getting a bit of performance out of him. <laughs> And you see the, these, these cold, utilitarian Kiwi farmers and their dogs have got these lovely jackets. <laughs> I, don't th I don't think you're quite as, quite as uh, hard as you, yeah, exactly. That one is not a working dog, that is called a potluck. <laughs> a potluck? A potlicker. <laughs> a potlicker. Such a smooching. That was, and that uh, uh, came from the, um, way up in the, high, in the hill country where the guys would be out, way out on the back and they would um, cook their meals and then uh, to clean the pots, they just put them outside the dogs will look. <laughs> right, Fraser, how's it going at this end? You're, you're, looking, you're looking intently over, can you see the number on his screen yet? The number? <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of thing you don't, want, you don't want to see the number until the last sheet's been through the pen. I don't want to see the number until those ones have been scanned out there. So Fraser, let's, obviously, like, it's, it's a bit like um, exam results day at school. Yes. But, What's a sensible number well, you'd, you'd, hope, you'd be, you'd be ha you know, reasonably happy with? Uh, you'd hope for about 170, but we've moved the lambing date forward about um, 15 days. That's quite significant, yeah, two weeks, pretty significant. There'll be, there'll be a few that are, uh, that are out, and plus the ram came out like 20 days ago. Yeah, so, he, before, so you, you chat there, you won't be able to pick, pick them up quite yet. No. No. So... About 165. 165. And, and what's more important is it the is it the um, dries, the number of dries, or is it the overall scanning, or both? Uh, probably the number of dries, really. Scanning triplets. You, oh yeah. Oh, not scanning triplets. No. Okay, so they'll go down as multiples or singles. Yes. Yeah. I'm with you. I've, we've scanned the triplets before and separated them everywhere. Yeah. And uh, you put a whole lot of triplets together and it's just carnage. <laughs> <laughs> the 
ladies love sheep farmers and shearers because of all the lanolin in the wall. We've just got nice. such soft hands. Not so some, I think people sometimes they find that they drop their scanning a little bit and end up with more lambs. That's what I've said, you know, a couple of clients at home. Yes. So just because it's slightly counterintuitive, but you can, if you've got a few fewer, you can keep them going a bit easier and they'll be bigger and stronger, hopefully. Yes. But you know that. But the genetic, the genetic um, makeup keeps, has, has changed. If people have been collecting rams on that basis, by lambing percentage. Oh yeah, okay. The Cooper genetics are getting over 200% at scanning and like with triplets and things, it's just getting too high. Alright, so you need to sort of keep it back a bit. Yeah, so select on, yeah, selecting different rams to get down. Are you right for the camera in your face, quickly? Have we got time? Have we got 30 seconds? <laughs> what are you going to ask me? Well, I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> Wayne, this is the scanner here, working very hard. Uh, he's taking a 30 second break and what we've got him. Wayne. How difficult is sheep scanning to learn? To learn? Uh, difficult at the start. It yeah. takes a few years to get your eye in. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, it's a confidence thing. Okay, okay. Is what part of the thing difficult, difficult about it that you, when they leave, you don't know whether you got it right or wrong when you get started, I guess. You have to wait for the farmer to ring you up. And yeah, there. he'll ring you up. No <laughs> doubt about that if you're wrong. Would, <laughs> would you recommend it for, for young people looking to get in and earn some money in farming? Or what, do you think it's, who, who would it suit, who would it not suit? It suits people that can afford to have a couple of months off of the year. Yeah. But I also go to Australia and do uh, three months over there as well. So how, how what sort of length of time are you scanning up for the year? I go over in February. Okay. February, March, April in Australia. A month off and then back into it here, middle of June. For another sort of three Six, months? Six, eight weeks. So oh, it's it bloody hard work. It works in well. I've also got a couple of crutching traders as well. So. Perfect. I actually did a video about me trying to scan some new hogs for my girlfriend's dad. Right. And it, the, people will notice that I never filmed a follow-up video to that because the results were, <laughs> there's some discrepancies. Anyway, I'm not going to hold you up. Right. I'm not going to hold you up. You're busy. So, Fraser, you are talking about moving that lambing date earlier. Yes. By two weeks. What's the thinking there? What's your, what's your grand plan there? The grand plan is they'll be at the 12th of December, they'll be about 100 days old, to the oldest. Almost ready to be to be killed at Christmas. Like a, um, so just to lift that percentage that's close to that 35 kilos. Okay, and is that, is that because, what's special about the 12th of December? Is it uh, well, seasonal prices, getting, getting them away with workspace? Yeah, workspace and, and um, uh, workspace and, and just timing for, uh, for the summer. Okay. So when we get them away before it gets too dry? Yes. So if we, if we do um, if we do those and a bit of stores then, and then we'll be set up for the rest of the summer and be fine. And, and it'll take the, take the burden off as well. The lambs will be yeah, more likely to stop for, um, for worm burden in, in yes. the summer. Yes, yeah. It's just, it's, the seasons have changed. So we've got a lot, like at the start of September, it's going for it, like growing. And there's such, just so much feed that trying to have a lactating ewe keeping on top of it, um, they, they need to be earlier. Yeah, you know, I was supposed to be on Mount Cook hunting today. Yeah, I don't think so. And it is a 50 knot wind, so uh, <laughs> yeah. we're delaying till next weekend we'll be up there. Or will you be hunting on Mount Cook deer? Uh, tar. Tar? Tar and shanty, yeah. It's a tar, like, oh, you tell me what a tar is. Because I didn't know what a tar was until I came over here. It's like a goat, isn't it? It's a massive... I don't know. I, I, uh, I've never been hunting. Up, up oh, here. find out, I guess. In the mountains, I usually go for paddock, paddock deer. <laughs> you know, you have to go truck hunting. <laughs> well, they call it ca canned hunting. Yeah, yeah basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the tar are like this very. I've never seen one in the flesh, but I've seen plenty of photos. And they are like this very impressive, almost like maned goat, aren't they? The, 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 the bucks, I guess, the bucks, the billies, yes. that we call the male. Yeah, I'll try and find a photo of one of them because they're pretty impressive beasties. Yeah. Yeah. But just like every mammal here in New Zealand, it's all introduced by very helpful Europeans. Yeah. So um, they are now have to be managed pretty intensively. Because yeah. they'll be from the like Himalayan, you said, don't they? The tar. Yes. Yeah. So they just they found New Zealand's probably like the land of milk and honey for them, Mount Cook. Yeah, and, and for possums and rabbits. And, and for possums and rabbits and deer and pigs.
That is the first and the biggest mob done and Fraser doesn't look too nervous. Now for the older ewes, there's just north of 300 of them and they've actually gone to a different ram and we'll talk about that in a second. Sheep scanning is hard work, not least because it's a lot of very repetitive movements, but Wayne's setup has a number of adjustments to help reduce wear and tear on the operator. We'll get a good look at that in a second too. These, these are uh, yeah, the seven or eight year old ewes. Oh yeah, okay. And, uh, so you start with a thousand pockets and then they work their way down to about three, 325 in here. Okay. So, yeah, so and they would have been lambed as hoggets? Yes. Yeah. And they've gone, they were just saying this year your mum's got her own her own rams and they've gone to these, is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So these are not Perrindale or Rom no, not Perrindale, not Coopworth or Romney, but they are Suffolk's of some description. Yes, the majority of the I like your setup, Wayne. Anyway, it's pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, I got a cropped elbow. Oh yeah, I'm... I can't. I can't open the shot. So I've just got it on a foot pedal now. And I just put in that auto draft last year. Oh yeah, but fantastic. Brilliant. So you just push the button in it. Just draft whatever way you want. And so the reds will be your singles. Will you? Now, I've just left this in to give you a sense of the speed these sheep are being scanned at. This is real time. I still can't get over how quick it is. Okay, he might not be differentiating between twins and triplets, but the value added for Fraser is still immense and will be done all of today's mob in no time. Once the older ewes are done, there is a very special batch of just 12 ewes to do. These girls are the troublemakers who are always getting out and so have to be kept in the front paddock all the time. Any guesses how many of them will be empty? This is, this is the big mob. There we go. Ah, so these are this, these last lots come through. They're the, they're the fence jumpers, are they? Fence jumpers, or the crawler ever's, or whatever. Generally unruly, anyway. <laughs> and they're all in lamb. Yes. Typical. Should be. Typical. Um, so yeah, that's what three hours, sixteen hundred sheep ish. Obviously, it's half ten now. Half ten. Yes, three hours, sixteen hundred sheep. So that's a very good effort on behalf of a scanner. Oh, it's think... not always it's not always accurate, but it's generally pretty close. Yeah, well, I think when you're doing that number of animals, like there's always. Well, you know? the thing is, this first season, if he's wrong, you give him a bloody good beating, and after that, give him a bloody hiding, and then and so, don't pay him. All right, scores on the doors. Well, scores okay. on the doors. What did I say? You don't have to shake. We, we can edit Fraser. this. What did I say? You, you said you said um, you'd like. We asked you what you'd be happy, comfortable with. You said 170, but you moved it forward two weeks. You said probably more like 165. And what have we got? The 165. Oh, <laughs> 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 hey, it's all say it's Photoshop, no? It's one the other issue that hasn't been mentioned here okay. is that the farm is now under new management and therefore there are some generally some teething problems, whereas the young fella's got to learn a few things. <laughs> And so you have to expect that performance may well, well decline a little bit. Hopefully it'll bottom out very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> what was the um, dries? Are they on there? There's, there's, there's 80 that are dry, but those are, the, you know, being only 20 days out of 80. Oh, so there's some of those will be, will be re-scanned. We yes. would hope that at least half, if not more than that, because that would be about 5% there, and if you halve that, that's your 2.5%. Yeah, I'm, like I'm, I'm right now, am I? Yeah. In this yeah. particular mob, it would be a pretty good, pretty good result. I'd say so. And yeah. if you add to that another 1,100 ewes on potters, where the dry rate might be about 1%, then you'll end up with a dry rate overall of possibly about 2%. That's, that's fantastic. generally not too bad. Well, the, the has been less. Brilliant. Well, I think... I feel like I've not really done any work, or I haven't. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. I've not done any work, but I'm ready for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. I think Wayne's probably ready for a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. He's keen for a latte. Raise it. Yeah. Cheers, Wayne. So there we go. 1600 in three hours. Good result? Yeah. Happy farmer, I can tell you're ecstatic. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, it's always good, eh? <laughs> you can keep the lights on next year. Yes, yeah, I hope so. I'll keep it going. You might have to sack the staff, though. <laughs>
a few loose limbs. Sorry, I can't hear you from over here. <laughs> uh, nice one. What's the next job on um, for these girls? Then obviously you've got another farm to scan. You do that in a little while, will you? And Wednesday, they'll um, be shorn. The ones that pre-lambing shear. Yeah. Yeah. And is that full? Do you leave the bellies on them as yes. well? That yeah. Okay, yeah, to keep them warm. Yes. Yeah. And they'll be um, they're like a cover comb, so they're you know wider. Leaves a bit of more cover on them, I guess. Yes. Yeah. But we've okay. got to make sure we have a week of good weather, otherwise they're yes. under too much pressure. Yes. And then then you'll be into lambing before you know it. Yeah, last, so August, yeah, the 30 days in August, we'll be just upping the feed and getting ready for lambing. All goes yeah. round and round. Yeah, and there's a lot of uh, conveyor work. These will get five and one, and, and uh, like a LS, LSD drench, and uh, flexidine, long-acting iodine. Yes, okay, it's like the iodine version of Smart Shot, isn't it? Yes, yeah, and it gives them a really good, really good go on, um, when the lambs hit the ground, they seem to have a lot more vigour. Oh, there you go. There you go, scientific, I like it. <laughs> right, I'll leave these guys be now, they've been good sports for having me along, as, as has Wayne, for uh, letting me look over his shoulder. So if you enjoyed that, don't be afraid to click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and that little bell next to it. Give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment. What would you reckon, 1603 hours? I think that's pretty fast. 165% landing percentage, too low, too high. Let me know what you think. I'll see you for the next one.